Hi, my name is Phil Grove and I'm here to share with you a cutting edge real estate investing strategy that I call mortgage payment assignment. This is the hottest strategy today and involves selling unsellable houses to unloanable buyers and making a killing in the process. I promise this strategy is the easiest, cheapest, and fastest way to make money in real estate right now and the safest. And in this free video series, I'm going to show you why and what it means for your business. And more importantly, I'm going to show you how you can crush it with mortgage payment assignment deals. You don't need any experience, fancy sales skills, or even any money at all. This is not ordinary real estate investing. You see, with these kinds of deals, there's no rehabbing, there's no bank loans, there's no underwriting, there's no inspections of any sort, there's no credit checks, there's no holding costs. And best of all, you can count on guaranteed closes and move-in dates. In this free video series, you'll also hear from real motivated sellers that went through a mortgage payment assignment process and the buyer who bought their home by taking over their payments. These videos were completely unscripted and the seller and the buyer didn't even know they were going to be on video. Okay, let me step back for a minute and tell you a little bit about myself. I've done over 1,200 real estate deals involving over $200 million in real estate transactions, and over 1,000 of those deals have been short sales. Now, for those of you who don't know, a short sale is where you negotiate to buy a house for less than what's owed so that you can buy the house and flip it and make a profit. And when I started doing short sales back in 2003, most people didn't even know what short sales were. So I became a real estate investor, and I'm advertising, we buy houses and that sort of thing, and sellers are calling me for my advertising. And what I discovered when I started talking to all these sellers is, surprise, surprise, not only were these sellers motivated, but most of them were also broke and most of them had no equity. So I was spending an incredible amount of time talking to these broke motivated sellers with no equity and for the most part, throwing all these leads away. So I started to think to myself, gosh, is there anything I can do to help these people and maybe make some money along the way? So after doing a lot of research, I discovered this thing called a short sale. And with the help of another real estate investor, we figured out how to buy houses through short sales at a discount. We bought a house and flipped it and made $15,000 and I had a new business. But let me tell you something about short sales. Short sales are an incredible amount of paperwork. They, they take a long time and I'm not a paperwork kind of guy. So to, to help with that, I hired an administrative assistant to do the paperwork. But you know, now I had a staff, now I had somebody I had to pay. So to keep her busy, I walked into my local real estate club and I said, hey, does anybody here know any broke motivated sellers with no equity? And every investor in the room raised their hand and I said, send all those leads over to me. And they sent me their leads and that was about a thousand short sales ago. Here's the bottom line that I keep coming back to. The vast majority of motivated seller leads that I was getting were low, zero, or even negative equity deals. In other words, they're leads from people that owe more money than the house is worth or have little or no equity. And this hasn't changed. Most sellers that call investors from investor marketing have little or zero or negative equity in their homes. The majority of leads you're going to get from sellers have no equity to work with, and this causes a long list of challenges. They take up a lot of the investors' time, causing frustration, and ultimately, in some cases, lead new investors to get discouraged and give up on the business. Historically, the ideal solution has been for the investor to make money on these deals by doing short sales. Unfortunately, short sales have some serious problems, and I should know because I've done over a thousand of them. They take a ton of time, many months, and even a year or more in some cases. We just had one that took over 17 months and we're dealing with one that we've been working on for over 24 months. We're dealing with lenders who have whole departments dedicated to handling short sales and somehow they manage to prove themselves completely incompetent, drag everything out, and lose the paperwork again and again and again. And they require a ton of paperwork. I'm not joking here. Doing short sales makes doing your taxes look like fun. Literally each and every short sale file in my office is as thick as an encyclopedia book. But the biggest problem is that short sales are simply too tough to complete and profit from as an investor in today's market. And this is fundamentally because short sales at the end of the day require a buyer to get a new loan in order to buy a house. You're selling these deals to a buyer with a loan. Now remember a few years ago when even a dog could get a loan from a bank? It used to be they just held a mirror under your nose and if they saw fog, you got a loan. But as you You've probably heard the banks have gone crazy and they're not giving out loans anymore. Here's a fact. 
59.5 million Americans have a credit score between 300 and 639. Subprime is generally defined as 640 and below. So there used to be different kinds of loans available for all these people, but these loans have gone away and this type of lending is virtually dead. This leaves 59.5 million Americans who can't get a loan to buy a house. That's a lot of people. These people used to be in the buyer pool, used to be able to buy a house, and now they can't buy a house anymore. Let's put this into perspective. There's only 115 million households in the USA. That means that over half the Americans that might be buyers can't now get a loan because of the new credit standards. And that's not even considering all the other people that are now disqualified for all sorts of other reasons. For example, there's another 23 million hardworking Americans, and I know because I'm one of them, that are self-employed. Self-employed people have historically required something called a stated income loan. Well, guess what? Stated income loans also don't exist anymore. Let's face it, everywhere you look, people are losing credit and their credit lines. So if you add it all up, there's now 84 million people that can't get loans that used to be able to get loans. Let's face it, the majority of American buyers that want to buy houses are now unloanable. So basically, we're dealing with a glut of unsellable houses and unloanable buyers. So, to recap, we have a huge supply of sellers with no equity, but we can no longer help these sellers because short sales are more difficult than ever and because banks are simply not loaning money to all the people that might want to otherwise buy all those houses that they're trying to do short sales on. And because of all that, the majority of short sales are now ending up in foreclosure. And since banks don't want to make loans anymore, now pay attention because I'm going to say something really important here. The value of the home is no longer in the home. The value of the home is now in the loan. In other words, it used to be that people were out looking for houses. Now people are out looking for loans. It's the loan that has value and not the home. And I know this sounds a little confusing, but it's worth repeating because it's such a critical point. The value of the house is now the loan itself. So a mortgage payment assignment is the solution. It's the answer. It's what the market wants. It's basically how to solve the problem of unsolvable houses and unloanable buyers. Alrighty, let me take a minute and explain the mechanics of how a mortgage payment assignment transaction works. It all starts with a seller. So we have a seller over here, and what kind of a seller do we have? We have a guy, and he's got a house, and unfortunately, uh, it's an unsellable house. In other words, he has no equity in the house, and he literally can't afford to pay the closing costs and, and uh, uh, commissions in order to sell the house. So it's a very unhappy seller with an unsellable uh, house. Now, when somebody owns a house, there's really two documents that are involved in any kind of a, a home ownership. You know, one is a deed, okay? And the way the deed works is whoever's name is on the deed, that's who owns the house. So you've got a deed, and then you've got a second document called a mortgage. And the way it works with a mortgage is whoever's name is on the mortgage, that's who owes money on the house. Now, normally the same name that's on the deed is on the mortgage, but that's not necessarily the case in case of divorces and other things that you're going to see in a minute. Uh, it could be two different names. So we've got a seller with an unsellable house, and then I come along the investor. So I'm an investor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer to buy this home from the seller. In fact, I'm going to make a very generous offer. I'm going to offer to buy the house for the full balance of the loan, and I'm going to offer to buy the house using a very special contract. So we call this a master contract. And what the contract says is it says the following. It says that I agree to buy this house, and when I buy this house, the deed will transfer to me, the buyer, in exchange for me agreeing, the buyer agreeing to make the payments, the mortgage payment, on the loan going forward. So I'm going to get it under contract using this very special master contract. Now what do I do? Well, now what I do is I find a buyer. And what kind of a buyer am I going to find? 
I'm going to find one of the 83 million Americans that can't get a loan but wants to buy a home. So this is an unloanable buyer. And so he's very sad because he'd like to buy a home, but he can't get a loan. And what I'm going to tell the buyer is, I will sell you a home and I will provide financing with the home. So I will assign my contract to the buyer. So I'm going to cross my name out on the contract and I'm going to write in the name of the buyer. And at that point, the buyer will buy the property from the seller. And when the buyer buys the property, the deed transfers from the seller to the buyer. And that makes the seller very happy because now he has sold his unsellable house. And then the buyer gets the deed and is now an owner of a property. And that makes the buyer a very happy buyer. And of course, the buyer then agrees to make the payments on the mortgage of the sellers going forward. But here's the best part. In exchange for me assigning this contract to the buyer, the buyer at closing is going to pay me, boom, an assignment fee. And this assignment fee is typically six to $12,000 on average price houses, could be more, uh, could be less. And of course, that makes me, the investor, very, very happy because I just made six to $12,000 selling an unsellable house to an unloanable buyer. I didn't have to put a dime of my money in the deal. And, you know, I didn't actually have to buy or sell uh, real estate myself. So that's why we call this a mortgage payment assignment. And of course, the beauty of it is it is a win, win, win transaction for all parties involved. And by the way, the higher the price range, the higher the fee. We just did a mortgage payment assignment deal. We actually made $90,000 on a luxury mortgage payment assignment. But wait a minute, Phil, is this legal? Well, I'm not an attorney, but I always have some of America's leading real estate attorneys review my investing strategies before I implement them. In fact, Mark Torok of the Torok Law Firm, PC, has even gone so far as to getting the AMP strategies reviewed and approved by several leading attorneys and even has a legal network of over 200 attorneys all across the country. And guess what? They all want to close these deals for you. And later in this video series, I'll show you how you can get these deals closed anywhere in the country. I'm sure you noticed I said AMP's strategies. And that's because AMPS isn't just about mortgage payment assignment. There's actually two more ways to paper up your deals. And those are AMPS wraps and AMPS rent to own. And I'll get into those strategies later in the video series. Okay, here's a real life deal with one of my best students, Danny Lynn. The seller owed $300,000 and they were on the market for six months with only four showings. And those four showings happened during the first two weeks the house was on the market. That's pretty common. There's a lot of these houses on the market and there's just not that many buyers that have loans that are getting shown these houses by realtors. The true value of the house was actually less than what they owed. Danny Lynn found a buyer who put up a $12,000 assignment fee to buy the house with a mortgage payment assignment. Did you catch that? The seller was more than happy to pay $12,000 so he could take over the payments and get a home with a loan, even though the home was worth less than what was owed on it. Since the home came with the loan, the price, and even the negative equity that came with it was not nearly as important to the buyer as the loan itself. And that's what mortgage payment assignment is all about. AMPS deals allow investors like you and me to make anywhere from six to $12,000 or more on deals, even deals with little, no, or negative equity. So do you see why I'm getting so excited about these AMPS deals? Now, I know you might be thinking, why in the world would a seller sell their home and leave the loan in their name? It's simple. It's their least worst option. Let me explain. Here are their options. Number one, they can list the house with a realtor, hope to find a buyer that shows up with a loan, Loan, and once the buyer does show up, because the house has little, no, or negative equity, they're going to have to bring anywhere from $15,000 or more to the closing table to pay the closing cost and all the real estate commissions. And the whole process is going to take anywhere from nine to 24 months because that's how much inventory is out there. Option two, they could try to do a short sale. But nowadays, more than 50% of short sales are ending up in foreclosure. And even if the short sale is successful, it can possibly end up with deficiency judgments, 
1099s and all sorts of long-term credit implications. Option three, they could simply walk away from the deal and take a foreclosure. But that's the worst possible option. We call that the atomic bomb of credit scars. Or finally, option four, they could do a mortgage payment assignment. A mortgage payment assignment is fast. It doesn't require any money from the seller. It doesn't hurt their credit. And it is by far their least worst option. And of course, the least worst option always ends up being the best option. And if you're the investor that offered it to them, you end up being the hero. So in summary, mortgage payment assignments are win, win, win strategies. The seller gets out of a house without paying much, if any money at all. They avoid foreclosure and they don't get their credit destroyed. They also get to sell the house quickly. The buyer gets to buy a home that they otherwise wouldn't be able to buy because they can't get a loan. And they get to buy the home quickly. And of course, you, the investor, make all of this possible and you walk away with thousands of dollars in your pocket without risking a dime of your own money. In fact, you didn't even have to buy or sell a property. You simply assigned your contract and let the buyer and seller do the deal together. Okay, you're an investor, right? So let's look at the numbers. What if you averaged one deal out of every 20 motivated seller leads that you get? I do a lot better than that, but let's use that number because that's the conservative estimate I get when I'm talking to new investors. And I'm talking about just regular old real estate deals, fix and flip and equity deals. These kinds of deals generally, when you get a good one, will make you anywhere from fifteen to $20,000. The chances are those other 19 leads that didn't make you any money, you threw away because they had no equity. Of course, now you know that many of those leads are very good potential mortgage payment assignment deals. So let's be conservative and say of those other 19 leads, maybe you convert four of them into mortgage payment assignment deals. And let's say you get at the low end of the assignment fee for each one. Let's say you only make $5,000 on each of those deals. That means you can make an extra $20,000 from leads you're currently throwing away every month. This would essentially double your business if you're already a real estate investor. Of course, these are hypothetical numbers. There's no way I can predict the future Future, including any results you'll get, but these are the kinds of numbers that I get when I get 20 leads. Now, as I mentioned before, most of the first 1,200 deals that I got were short sales. I was way ahead of the curve, but I got to tell you, the next 1,000 deals that I'm in the middle of doing are mostly mortgage payment assignment deals. In my opinion, the short sale boat has left the pier, at least for investors. But the mortgage payment assignment boat is just pulling up. Here's your chance to join me this time around. So if you're an active investor, here's what I'm going to suggest you do. Go back to all those zero equity leads and offer them a mortgage payment assignment solution. And if you don't already have leads to work with, I've got you covered. In my next video, I'm going to show you my very best marketing piece that I get a lot of my mortgage payment assignment deals with. I'm also going to show you an example of a target neighborhood for AMPS deals, what these neighborhoods look like, and even show you a real unscripted testimonial video of a motivated seller. I can assure you their response is going to shock you in a good way. But I also know you're probably wondering, how am I going to get these deals closed? Later in the video series, I'm also going to introduce you to a national law firm that will close these AMPS deals for you in all 50 states. Well, I'm off to prepare my next video. In the meantime, be sure to leave your feedback and converse with your fellow fellow investors in the comments below. I really appreciate your feedback and I'll see you soon.